What's up everyone, Willie Apple here. Today, we're going to be going over some already confirmed features for macOS 16. So we'll be getting the first beta for macOS 16 in 18 days. As of recording this video, it will be 17 days when you see this video. So let's take a look at what is coming at WWDC that's already confirmed. Alright, so the first one is actually Magnifier on Mac. So this is a little bit of an interesting thing that Apple is porting to macOS. So if we were to skip over right here, you'll see that it uses continuity camera right here. And then when the person opens up the Magnifier app, it looks exactly like the iOS app and immediately connects a continuity camera. Apple has also confirmed that this will work with USB cameras, and I'm not sure about the built-in display camera. I don't know if that will work or not. But we can also see a couple of things from the screenshot that I will be talking about in a little bit. So as you can see, it just lets you zoom in and out. Something I've actually wanted inside a continuity camera because we don't really have that feature yet. And it's just showing somebody zooming into the board. So I could see this being a pretty useful thing in college for me personally. If I'm just sitting all the way in the back, if I just have an iPhone mount, I'll just use it. And there are also a couple of things like turning some pictures into screenshots and then you can colorize it. And it's just a pretty cool feature that you can just use. You can even automatically straighten it. So I guess Apple Intelligence will get a little bit better here. And you can also take pictures of the thing and it will just save. And also you could turn everything, like this looks like handwritten text got converted to a PDF right here, or just copy and paste a text. But you can also see a couple of things right here. Right here we have a toolbar button. Kind of reminds me of a feature that's already inside of Mac OS, inside the Image Playground app. So if I were to go to my already created creations real quick, so you can see right here that there's this plus button. It looks pretty much the exact same, except it uses a different SF symbol. So I have a feeling we'll be getting a developer API where instead of having the plus button in the toolbar, you'll be able to put it at the bottom. And I think Apple will be recommending to put it on the bottom. And also another feature that could potentially be coming is right side sidebar inside of SwiftUI since Apple makes all their apps in SwiftUI these days. It looks like we'll be ha having the full control of the right side. So having a right sidebar would be a pretty useful thing for a couple of apps. Although this could just be navigation split view with three columns. I could be wrong about that. And you could also see see that you also have a slider in the center so it's really hard to get things directly in the center inside of SwiftUI. You gotta like use app kits so if Apple does give us more control over the toolbar inside of macOS that would be a pretty amazing feature to see and it looks like Apple will actually be giving that to us. Now the next thing we'll be talking about is something to do with the app store. So if I were to go to my app right here and scroll down, this is a bad example of it, let me go into here. You have these things called app privacy nutrition labels. So it looks like Apple's going to be doing the same thing with accessibility as you can see right here. This is what it's going to look like. Now I highly doubt Apple's going to lead this in iOS. I can pretty much confidently bet that this will be coming over to macOS as well. Considering that Apple wants to keep things consistent with iOS and macOS and usually things that come inside the app store on iOS get ported over to the Mac app store even though it's completely different code base and not swift ui right now i could pretty much confidently say that accessibility nutrition labels will be coming over to mac os so here are a couple of examples of what it looks like on ios it should look the exact same here maybe the icon will be a little bit bigger on mac os all right so i'm not really sure how this is gonna work considering i don't, would never use this feature unfortunately but it looks like you're gonna be able to like tap on the screen or like feel vibrations or something i have no idea how this is gonna work or it's just gonna read it to you and also show the braille of those characters so this is meant for people who are blind this also is confirmed to be coming to the mac as you can see right here so it looks like it's just gonna be reading it over to you so i'm just not sure how this is gonna work we'll find more about it inside of ios 19 and Mac OS 16 of course but it looks like it's just gonna be doing live captions and stuff like that and just adding Braille and I guess if you plug in a Braille device it will just pop some Braille up and you'll be able to feel those captions so we'll see how that works hopefully it's pretty cool and helps blind users use iPhone more all right so this is a feature that is pretty similar to a feature we already have but looks like it's going to be a little bit more system wide so this is called accessibility reader so right off the bat this kind of looks like this feature right here where you just have this where it looks like you have this apple ui except there's a couple of differences with this it's not just it's not just inside of safari this is system wide and it looks like it will also be able to read things to you. So I wouldn't be surprised if Safari gets this feature by going to show reader and we'll just start reading things on the page. 
I would probably use that quite a bit. Hopefully Apple makes it more system wide. Yeah, being able to customize text and launch from any app, that would be a pretty cool feature. So hopefully it's triple click the side button, press accessibility reader, and then you'll be able to see the text on the screen and just be able to play it. All right, so the next feature has to do with background sound. So inside of macOS 15.5 right here, if we were to go to accessibility and audio, you have this section called background sound. So if you were to play this right here, you would be able to choose whichever sounds you want. So you got a couple of new ones right here. So it looks like it's gonna be more customizable. So instead of just having rain, you'll be able to change an equalizer and do a lot more things with the equalizer. Or this will basically let you choose the EQ setting. So this is not 100% confirmed to be coming to Mac OS, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just put it in settings somewhere. Now the next thing is a little bit interesting, but I guess if you use your MacBook in a car, this will be really nice to see. We're getting vehicle motion cues. So they're basically just little dots that go in the direction the car is moving. I guess Apple has seen that it works pretty well on iPhone. So they just figured out how to port it to Mac. It's basically just the exact same thing. It's just, it looks more expanded because I guess the screen is bigger and there are just a lot more dots than the iOS version considering that the iPhone is just one big tall screen. Now the MacBooks on the other hand go side to side. So Apple would need to optimize this a little bit. So, so if you get motion sick, that means that you'll be able to use your Mac in a car or something. All right, so those are all the confirmed features inside of macOS. Now I'd like to briefly go over some features that could be coming. So if you were to go inside of, go to the sessions and lab category, you'll see that you'll have a bunch of labs that you can go to. So usually these labs are kind of related to what was announced. So it looks like we'll be getting a ton of Swift UI updates. So these are more developer focused and it looks like we'll be getting some new Apple intelligence features. So it looks like Apple will be open sourcing Apple intelligence to let developers use the LLM in their apps. Considering how image playgrounds work is it just basically generates a prompt and it just makes the prompt better. So Apple has their own LLM. It's pretty basic from what I know, but maybe Apple will be updating it and making it a lot better. It also looks like despite these screenshots, we're getting a design group lab. I have no idea how this will work. I guess Apple will be talking about the new design and stuff like that. If it is in fact coming, or maybe they'll just simply be talking about the depressing, just adding a button down here. Who knows, we'll figure it out once WWDC comes. But considering that Apple has the word design right here, this is pretty interesting. They don't usually do this unless something is happening. And you got your typical Vision OS and Watch OS labs, which is those platforms. Not a lot of people will probably show up to that. I haven't decided if I'm gonna be going to these labs or not, but I might. I definitely won't be going to this one. And usually Swift does not have major updates. They did have a major update last year, but that was different. So yeah. To summarize, design and Apple intelligence looks like it's gonna be a talking point at WWDC. I'm surprised they're doing this. I guess they're just gonna be open sourcing their model since that was rumored by Mark Gurman. But yeah, thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Tell my apps to Willy Widgets, Willy Study, and Willy Dreams down in the description down below. And stay tuned for my live stream as I'll be going live reacting to WWDC and all the announcements. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!